Tonight, Canada's largest police union calls the Saskatchewan Marshal Service needless on election Facebook and Instagram ads. Lighting up the fall sky, a solar storm ignites the northern lights all across Canada. Descending a skyscraper was the easy part, how a CBC photographer overcame his fear of fundraising. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It's Friday, October 11th, and this is the CBC Saskatchewan News. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Plaster, as Sam McKeg is way tonight. Another busy day on the campaign trail in Saskatchewan. Both leaders were touting their plans, but as Alexander Kwan reports, they were also taking jabs at each other along the way. How our communities are built up is by uh, the, you know, the entrepreneurial attitude that we have. Scott Moe was all about business in Keniston today. The Sask party leader says if re-elected, he will make things easier for small businesses. During the pandemic, Saskatchewan slashed the small business tax rate, but it was supposed to increase from 1% to 2 next summer. That hike was announced in the most recent provincial budget. Now it's off the table. The NDP say it also sounds familiar. You know, this is something that we announced 40 I think 43 days ago, uh, something that is the right move. The NDP and SAS party are now presenting similar approaches to the small business tax rate, and the move is being welcomed by the Canadian Federation of Independent Businesses and provincial and local chambers of commerce. But when asked why he's flip-flopping on the tax rate now instead of earlier, Mo stood firm. We're being criticized for putting forward good, solid, foundational policy in this campaign. And if that's the criticism that the Saskatchewan party is receiving, uh, so be it. Carla Beck and the NDP spent Friday in Saskatoon unveiling their full platform, which contains a number of already announced proposals. This is a plan that's been built with the people of this province. This is the plan to address the things that are most important to Saskatchewan people consistently. Uh, cost of living being top of mind, the crisis in our health care system, uh, rising rates of crime. As for Mo's thoughts on the NDP's platform. Not necessarily a dishonest, dishonest platform, but being dishonest with the people of the province by not telling them how they're going to pay for that irresponsible, uncosted platform. And I would suggest it's because they don't intend on it. They're going to ask Saskatchewan people to pay for it. Through but Beck says she's committed to not raising taxes, and she says her documents prove that. It's there in the platform for people to look at. And again, we expect that people will scrutinize it. The Saskatchewan party has yet to release its platform. The province heads to the polls on October 28th. Alexander Kwan, CBC News, Regina. The National Union of RCMP officers is advertising on social media in advance of the upcoming provincial elections. But it says it's stopping short of endorsing any specific party. Shlok Talati reports. Canada's largest police union is encouraging people to cast their ballots. It spent more than $3,000 on Facebook and Instagram ads. The ads redirect viewers to the union's Saskatchewan website. The website calls the Saskatchewan Marshal Service needless. The Saskatchewan NDP calls the Marshal Service bogus and says it'll be scrapped if they're elected. Despite the ads, the union says it's not endorsing one particular party. So are we influencing the voter or are we educating the voter about an issue they may not be aware of? I see it as educating the voter. The Marshal Service was announced in 2022 but isn't expected to be operational until at least 2026. The province says the Marshals will help deal with rural crime and assist the RCMP when needed. Sask party leader Scott Moe reconfirmed his commitment to fund the service during this election campaign. He says it's the RCMP that has to work with the Marshal Service and not the union. The public sector union, the NPF, is going to advocate on behalf of what they feel will you know, essentially um, make, make for more officers and more union dues, and let's be that callous about it. Earlier this year, nearly 90 municipalities called on the province to pause the service. The Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities says there's a clear mandate from 200 other members offering support to the Marshal Service. Sam also says it does not support the NDP's plan to scrap it. When I first heard of that, I, I wasn't real happy and I don't think our members would be either. The RCMP union says it's held its position on the Marshal Service since before the NDP voiced its concerns. 
Experts say it's common for unions to weigh in before elections. Unions are just like any other organization and any other advocacy group. They've got members with interests, and those interests are impacted by decisions made by government. And so we should expect them to speak based on those interests. The RCMP declined to comment on the issue, saying it would want to maintain impartiality during the election period. Shlok Talati, CBC News, Regina. It's been two weeks of intense campaigning so far this election. And next week, Mo and Beck will face off against each other in a live debate. So, how are they doing so far? Our political panel chatted about it this morning on the Morning Edition. What do you make of uh, what you've heard this week? Uh, I recall the day basically saying that the Scott Moe and the SAS party have got it backwards because they've been politicking for four years and they're spending four weeks putting forward policy, which they don't seem to be terribly skilled at. And we, we knew that because we know they're very good at politicking. And we know this is why they have most of those rural seats uh, locked up because they've made the carbon tax uh, issues like that. The problem with uh, uh, Justin Trudeau is the issues. You're in a four-week election campaign and you're not running against uh, Justin Trudeau. You have to, as Adam said, account for your health care. You have to account for your own policies. And now you have to account for things that we're going to get into in terms of just candidate bad behavior, uh, which has really distracted, I think, Scott Moe's campaign. But what I think it ultimately comes down to is they don't sweat the details on the policies. All these things that they're announcing this week, as good as they are, and they're, as Adam pointed out, great little announcements, the issue related to uh, uh, in vitro fertilization is one that Alina Young brought up in petition form, if not daily, weekly in the legislature. So now you're moving on it after four years? It, it, and it, people know that. They're not, those who will be swayed to vote on that particular uh, issue get that this was something the government has done. And this is an overwhelming theme of the government. You've been in for 17 years and you don't seem to pay attention enough uh, to policies. You seem to be too obsessed with either uh, your old boy's joke club that's not working out very well for you or or your uh, politicking that's also not working out for you very well in this in this campaign when you move on to it. If you're talking about a bright future and a, a, a strong economy, uh, you're not coming across as the serious people who sweat the details and provide policies that provide that. And I think that this is what's really stalling uh, the Scott Bell campaign. We're two weeks into the election, or we will be as of uh, next Tuesday. Where is the SAS party platform? Where is the costing uh, of this? Who is running this campaign in this particular way? Uh, it, it's not been a good campaign. I'm not saying the NDPs have been brilliant, but there has been massive mistakes in the SAS party campaign. And as we saw this week, as good as the policies are, some of the things that they haven't done particularly well, when they put too much emphasis with political ministers putting forward uh, Bill 137 or the marshal services that seem to be mostly about uh, politics and appealing to rural vote and maybe getting your nose out of joint because you didn't like security at the legislature, more politics. All these things are coming home to roost. Voting day, just over two weeks away. It's on October 28th, but we hope you'll join us first for the leaders' debate on October 16th, which is next Wednesday. Carla Beck will face off against Scott Moe, and you can watch it live here on CBC starting at 6.05. Pharmacare is now the law of the land. A bill that was central to a political pact between the Liberals and the NDP passed the Senate last night. NDP leader Jagmeet Singh spoke about it today. Uh, we have been able to achieve something New Democrats have fought for for generations. This has been a long dream of New Democrats since Tommy Douglas. We've dreamed of making sure our healthcare system would include medication coverage. And now, Pharmacare is the law of the land. It's passed in the Senate, it's got royal assent. And what it's going to mean for people is why we're so excited. Uh, but now that it's passed, I want to tell you a bit about the journey of how we got here, a little bit of behind the scenes. This was a fight. Every step of the way, it was a fight with Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. They did not want to do this. It will provide certain drugs for diabetes and birth control at no cost. Separate deals will now need to be struck between Ottawa and the provinces. Health Minister Mark Holland said he hopes that it could be in place nationally by spring. Statistics Canada's September job numbers surprised economists today with an increase twice as large as that in August. It amounted to a gain of 47,000 jobs. This after four months of minimal change and no decrease in the unemployment rate. 
Analysts do warn, though, it may be just a temporary break in a long-term trend of slowing growth. And despite today's numbers, they still expect the Bank of Canada to cut its interest rate again. These are the images of last night's Aurora Borealis show that lit up much of Canada's skies from Ontario, Manitoba, New Brunswick, and all across Canada. The splashes of vibrant green, blue, purple, and red were seen from coast to coast to coast, and they could still be in sight in night skies over the weekend. Ethan will tell us more in his weekend weather forecast about that and more. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. As we all know, stepping outside of your comfort zone, it's not easy. Recently, one of our videographers here at CBC Saskatchewan, Jermaine Wilson, decided to take on a new challenge. But it may surprise you what scared him the most. I'm just getting rigged up to do the drop zone. You can see I'm way above the city. It's a little bit scary, but I, honestly, this was not the scariest part. We've got Jermaine Wilson up there right now. Jermaine's a 51-year-old father of three working for CBC Saskatchewan, and he's repelling to get over his fear of fundraising and asking for help. Reality is starting to set in that I have committed myself to raise $1,500. I'm not a fundraiser, so this is definitely outside my comfort zone. What am I going to do? I think I got this. I don't want to be the person who's asking everyone for money, but it is obviously for a good cause. Easter Seals is doing good things and I want to help. Yeah, we got this. Okay. Well, I came down here, I wanted to tell you that I'm gonna do something a little different. I brought my kids down here to tell you that I'm going to be climbing that tall building right there. What? Good, good. Did you ever climb a building this tall? No! I'm trying to raise the funds, but I don't quite have enough. Thank you so much. We did it. Oh, so much fun. Again, thank you, everyone. That was such a thrill, and I had the best time. Great work, Jermaine. Bringing a second laptop on your Mexican holiday this winter, it just got a little cheaper. The fees that tourists were hit with for bringing personal electronic devices into Mexico have been eliminated. These fees were applied when entering the country with more than one large device. This includes laptops, tablets, and cameras, while smartphones were exempt. According to AMA Travel, the Mexican government has now eliminated that tax at the Cancun International Airport for tourists, removing the cap on the number of electronics you can bring for your next beach vacation. People in Florida are picking up the pieces again. The state has been slammed by two hurricanes in two weeks. Ellen hit September 26th, then Milton roared across Florida two days ago. <sighs> it's unbelievable. I mean, I know it's some terrible things, but I gotta start all over again, you know? I just, everything I had there is, is no good. Milton pounded Florida with torrential rain, powerful winds, and destructive storm surges. Some of the worst damage came from the up to 20 tornadoes that touched down during the storm. At least 15 people have died. U.S. President Joe Biden will visit the storm-damaged areas on Sunday. Today, first responders continue to help people trapped by the flood waters. 
Governor Ron DeSantis says 1,600 people have been rescued. He also warned people to be careful, even though Milton has moved on. This weather update is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz Regina, proud member of the Capital Automotive Group. Ethan Williams is in with weather. Thanksgiving weekend. Mm. What's your favorite Thanksgiving part of the meal? Mm. You know, I think I got to go with the stuffing, especially when it's stuffed in the turkey itself. Not the stovetop stuffing. Got to be the real stuff. Me too. Stuffing brothers. Excellent. I love that. But it gets, uh, it's a pretty good start to the week as well, isn't it? Weekend. Yeah, a exactly. And, uh, and you know, we got some, uh, also some great sights in the skies for the weekend too. We saw some great Aurora shots uh, before the break there, but I want to take a second uh, to thank everyone in Saskatchewan who submitted their Aurora photos to us. And here's some of them uh, for you right now. Uh, they really were uh, visible, whether, you know, you were in a city or town with bright lights or out in the middle of the country uh, and all different colors as you see there too. Now this all started quite early in the evening, so you didn't have to stay up too late thanks to our uh, earlier sunsets now. This was all the result of a strong solar storm on the sun. It actually briefly hit the highest storm strength possible, a level G5, producing this incredible light display. And yes, there is the possibility that we may be able to see this again tonight, albeit the KP index a little bit lower, four to five, and again, could be visible within uh, a city with, uh, with the lights and uh, likely going to be visible, you know, as soon as we get some darkening skies out there. The only problem, though, is that we have some cloud cover now starting to move in. You can see a big band of that through much of the province. And with that, we do have a little bit of some rain showers as well from time to time. We've kind of been seeing this particular band hang around the Meadow Lake area through the day, stretching down to the Battlefords, some heavier mm. pockets in there. Do we have a secondary band that we're watching that's been moving through uh, Estevan and the southeast part of the province. But as you can see, cloud cover, a general theme for us as we head overnight tonight. It's thanks to this area of low pressure. It's going to quickly move out overnight, though. And I think as we head into the uh, even the uh, later evening hours tonight, that'll move southeastward along kind of that yellowhead corridor. But then the rain is out of here. High pressure starts to move in and clears us out for our Saturday. The north of the province remaining a little bit on the cloudy side until we get a little later into the long weekend, into Sunday, Monday. But that high is going to linger for, uh, you know, a lot of the eastern prairies into Saskatchewan and Manitoba. So we'll be seeing a lot of sunshine these next few days. I think that rain moving through tonight at most will bring maybe a millimeter or two. And again, it's mostly just east central sections of the province that'll be uh, seeing that. But the uh, issue that we're going to see a little bit, especially tomorrow, is that in between that low pressure area moving out and that high pressure moving in, the winds are going to pick up a little bit, maybe some gusts near 50 into the Regina area tomorrow. Uh, and uh, those will die down, though, as that high pressure starts to settle in a bit for Sunday. They'll pick up again a little bit as we head into the holiday Monday for western sections of the province. And then as that uh, wind starts to pick up a little bit, that's in advance of this next ridge into the jet stream beginning to build in some very warm temperatures already being forecast in Alberta and that'll bring the warm weather our way, especially in western sections of the province as we head into Monday. So the forecast for tomorrow calls for a, a little bit of a breezy one for the Ryder game and it will drop below freezing for Regina overnight Saturday into Sunday. But then as you see the temperatures begin to pick up, the wind becomes a theme for next week though as we see temperatures nearing the 20 degree mark then back down to seasonal conditions as we head into Thursday, Friday. For Saskatoon, I think uh, you'll see things clear out pretty nicely over these next few days here. Whether you're having the turkey on Sunday or Monday, I think you'll have a nice day otherwise. And uh, temperatures remaining above seasonal until we get to midweek. Pattern breaks down a little bit on Thursday with a uh, chance of showers in there. But uh, overall, turkey outside maybe, Dan? Possibly this weekend. Barbecue turkey. I love that. Thanks, Ethan. You're welcome. It's, it's the end of an era in Las Vegas. The legendary Tropicana went out in true Vegas style earlier this week with fireworks as the opening act for the implosion. The casino was built in 1957 and was renamed the Tropicala for the movie, which was featured as Michael Corleone's casino in The Godfather Part II. It was demolished to make way for a future baseball stadium for the relocating Oakland Athletics. We'll be back after the break.
Fall is in the air and all eyes in the CFL are looking towards the playoffs. A crucial Week 19 matchup between the BC Lions and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders will go a long way into deciding home field advantage in the West Division. With a victory, the Riders can seal up their first home playoff game since the shortened 2021 season. If the Lions win, they would jump over the Riders for second with the playoff season to be finalized in the final game of the season. BC will have Nathan Rourke guiding the offense, and this will be the first time this season the dynamic pivot will be facing the Riders, and the green and white defense know they will have to be sharp on Saturday night. I mean, you can see it on his film. I mean, he's, he's still an explosive player. He still can make all the reads, can make all the throws, and, you know, he's got guys that can make plays for him. So, you know, it's going to be a hard task to, you know, to limit him to, you know, one or two things. But, you know, if we're able to just, you know, just like every other week, limit our explosive plays, limit his reads, you know, we feel like we'll be good. Um, he's a good quarterback. You know, he can make all the throws. He's a very talented guy. Um, he can run when he needs to. And, uh, you know, he's confident. And, you know, he's a leader. So, you know, they're going to rally around him. It's also Plaza of Honor weekend with the induction of former general manager Roy Shivers and future Hall of Fame quarterback Darian Durant. So it could be a doubly special night with two legends in the house and a potential home playoff date all wrapped up. Kickoff is 5 p.m. at Mosaic Stadium. Ethan's back with one last look at the weekend weather. And it looks like it's going to be a nice day for the uh, the game tomorrow. Again, kickoff at 5, looking at 11 degrees still in the Queen City. Mostly sunny skies. A little bit of wind, though, coming from the northwest at times near 50 in the afternoon. But should be dying down a bit as we get into those evening hours. Might want to bring a jacket to the game, though. It's going to be a little chilly. We'll probably drop below uh, freezing to, uh, into uh, Sunday, though. In the meantime, looking at uh, sunny skies tomorrow morning in Regina at 2 degrees. We're jumping quickly to 12 by the afternoon. Again, a little bit of a breeze uh, heading into those afternoon hours. Saskatoon, after a chance of showers overnight tonight, might have a little bit of lingering fog tomorrow. That quickly clears away, though, into the afternoon. We're looking for a temperature at the noon hour around 9 degrees, a mainly sunny day. And again, uh, the sunshine and those warm temperatures are going to be sticking around uh, through pretty much all the long weekend, Dan. Thanks, Ethan. Have a great weekend. You too. And that's it for us tonight. For more on the provincial election campaign, head to cbc.ca slash sask or subscribe to the CBC YouTube channel. Also, don't forget, catch the leaders debate here on CBC on October 16th. Thanks for watching and have a great Thanksgiving and we'll see you back on Tuesday.